I am Melba Zapasi. I represent the hashtag 1980 Freedom Movement. And we are here for the people of Zimbabwe. We are development oriented. We want uh, to take up the unfinished business of the liberation struggle, which was to give back the land to the people so that our nation will be economically independent. Sounds of worship. Bless you. I represent the voiceless. I also represent you, the women, and our children. dream is a Zimbabwe where everyone will have equal opportunities so that we all have a better life. Good afternoon to you all our viewers and thank you so much for making us the station of your choice. My name is Rimbo Nikadzino and this is The Shift right here on Heart and Soul TV. Today in the studio we are joined by Melba Zapasi who is uh, the president who contested in the 2018 election as hashtag 1980 freedom movement. On The Shift we listen to women's stories, we listen to their achievements, we have interviews with women in politics women in the corporate world, and women also in the public sector. We understand their journeys. How did they make it to the top? So that you, our viewers, will also listen to their stories and also be inspired and be motivated. And I would like to welcome you, President Melba Zapasi, to the program. Uh, thank you so much, Rimbo. I am humbled and I am honored to uh, uh, receive your invitation to your program. And I am so happy to present to the people of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Can you just briefly tell us who is President Melba Zapas? I understand that uh, in 2018 you were a presidential candidate and you also contested. Who is Melba Zapas? Okay, Melba Zapas is a woman who is like now 47 years, a mother of four and a grandmother as well. Yes, I contested in 2018 as the presidential candidate and the hashtag 1980 freedom movement, as you have mentioned. Uh, but now it is uh, the Divine Alliance for Vitalization of Inspired Development, the David Party. Okay. And uh, maybe just to briefly tell us, why did you get into politics? What was the move for you to get into politics? Um, to bring a new narrative in, the how, in how, may, uh, how women are perceived, you need to walk the talk. For a long time, like 40 years or so, it was male who have been dominating in leadership position. And this was due to the traditional stereotypes and patriarchal uh, influences. But it is time for us women to take challenge. It's, it's time for us women to change the perception of how people take things and be uh, in the, on, on the platform or lead, of leadership positions as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, looking back um, from long back, like how you're reflecting, how do you see a patriarchy even dominating in our current system? Do you think that men still have the power to, to rule like how uh, it's narrated from long back? Actually, it is still dominating. Because even if you, if you, if you look at the leadership uh, who are in like state of parliament, uh, in the industry, in the economic sector, you see that there are a few women who are on the leadership positions. Women are uh, only uh, regarded as uh, 
objects of less value, they are on the list of uh, the positions in companies, even in their uh, political sector. Mm -hmm. And when did you start to say you want to get into politics? What motivated you? Jenny, just share with us your journey to say, in 2018, I'm going to be a presidential candidate. How was the process for you? Actually, if I tell you the truth, my situation is kind of different. I am a believer. So I believe in uh, what comes to me through what I see on the ground, through what I see uh, maybe in dreams and let me just say dreams. <laughs> so I have a dream to fulfill. The country needs change. The country needs transformation. The country needs women to be uplifted. The country needs uh, like women to realize their potential and work uh, towards unleashing their potential. So I didn't, want, I didn't want to be on the lowly position. I decided to challenge at the top than being in, uh, as a councillor or as an MP. I decided to challenge starting from the top. Because I believe women can do it. Okay. So yes. you're the founder of uh, Hashtag 1980 Freedom Movement? Actually, I am the founder of the Divine Alliance for Fertilization of Inspired Development, uh, the party which I, now, which I now lead. And David came before Hashtag 1980 Freedom Movement. I joined Hashtag 1980 Freedom, Freedom Movement. Uh, it was sort of a coalition where we wanted to uplift women. So when the invitation came from Hashtag 1980 Freedom Movement, I took it positively. So what changed from Hashtag, uh, hashtag 1980 Freedom Movement to David? What was the, the transition from David to 1980, from 1980 now to David? What happened? As I have mentioned, I'm a person who is a believer. I believe in uh, my vision. So if I remain with hashtag 1980 freedom movement, I won't be able to fulfill my vision. Because, uh, uh, because uh, the Divine Alliance for Fertilization and Respite Development is a party which was founded on, of, on Christian values. So I couldn't fulfill the principles when I was in hashtag 1980 freedom movement. Okay, but and from uh, hashtag 1980, you were the president, and who were the people surrounding you? And who were the people stopping you from achieving whatever vision that you have? Because it's, if you're the president, I think you, as a woman as well, you had the power to oversee whatever that was happening. What stopped you from achieving your dream from 1980, then back to David? Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't see myself transferring the David dream in, to hashtag 1980. You know, when you are given a vision, it is you who should fulfill that vision. So if I remain with hashtag 1980 freedom movement, who was going to fill the David movement? It was just going to be a party that was founded a die at birth. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take this vision forward. I wanted to take the David movement forward. So if I remain with hashtag 1980 freedom movement, um, I couldn't fulfill that. At the same time, you know, hashtag freedom movement has got its, its leader already. And who is the leader? Dr. Francis Dana. Okay. So I believe in people um, pursuing their visions. So I didn't want to disturb him to pursue his vision. But what was the, what led him to appoint you to uh, contest in 2018 election? Was it because he saw the abilities that you have? Why didn't she uh, participate? Actually, our constitution uh, mentions that um, for a person to be a presidential candidate, he sh or she should have attained the age of 40. That is one reason for that. And he saw also the, the capability that was in him. He believed in women, uh, so he, could, he didn't look for a man. When we met and he uh, realized that I was, I was the president of a uh, David party, he talked 
me into joining his party so that we move together. Okay. Mm. And now you're leading a party, David. Can you just tell us why did you, um, why did you decide to start your own party? Why didn't you join MDC? Why didn't you join ZANU-PF? What was the motivation <coughs> behind you starting your own party? Um, it's difficult when you have your own vision to go and um, try to, if I may say, uh, collaborate or link that vision to somebody else's vision, which they feel their vision is already on the top, is already on the move. That's one. Then, as I have mentioned, David was founded on Christian values. So the mob just operandi of all those other parties differs from the way we operate as David. Mm -hmm. You know, so going to other parties and joining other parties, uh, it, did not, it did not go down well with, with my vision. Okay. I wanted to stand alone as a woman. I wanted to, to prove that women can do it. Mm -hmm. And which is why I am still David, the David president, and which is why I am going also to contest as the David president in the coming elections. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we we'll listen to President Melba Zapas's story. She's going to share with us the experiences during the 2018 elections. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back, and this is The Shift. Today, we're having a discussion with the president of David, formerly the president of Hashtag 1980 Freedom Movement. During the 2018 elections, four women participated uh, in the harmonized elections as a presidential candidate. We had uh, President uh, Meoba Zapasi, with President Togozani Kope, President uh, Joyce Simunjuru, and President Violet Mariacha. And we're going to listen to their stories. How did they make it to the 2018 harmonized elections? Their experiences, how did they finance the election? So over to you, ma'am. How did, how was it for you um, participating in the 2018 elections? Actually, uh, the journey is so difficult. Uh, as someone who was just starting getting into politics, you know, you, you get challenges. There are so many challenges that you meet along the way. Uh, challenges like uh, you are disowned by friends, family members, because, you know, the political situation that was the political environment, the political environment that was prevailing uh, before, so whenever you say I'm now into politics, they expect you, most of my family members expected me to say, no, I'm going to join ZANU-PF, you know, because they feel safe more in ZANU-PF. But I said, no, I'm going to stand by my decision. So you meet those challenges, you are disowned, friends will run away from you, you are left alone. You only have the members of your party to support you. Uh, those are some of the challenges that, that, that we face uh, as, um, as women presidents, one, as maybe a person in the opposition politics. And there was a time when we were nearing e election when somebody um, told me that we are going to count the number of people who have voted. And if we find that the number of the people who have voted for you, uh, actually, if your party wins in our area, we are going to ban all houses and of your family members. Um, not here to disclose, like, the family members. Some of them are family members. Some of them are close members. Some of them are people who are aligned to the other political parties because they don't want to be challenged. It's like you are coming to challenge them. We've been doing nothing. I'm here. I want to improve. I want to do things. But for them, they don't see that there's, there's, there's a... There's, a challenge that needs to be addressed for them everything is what they are concerned is just winning the elections mm -hmm. and taking the throne you see mm -hmm. so those are some of the challenges that that I met and my support was coming from my members of of the political party that had called me to join them that I was contesting for uh, 
even our finances, as you have, you have mentioned, uh, we financed our own party. And uh, going to the elections, were you confident that you're going to win? I was. And after the elections, after the, the outcome, I understand that you got 0.04% votes. How was this for you? Actually, I am the winner. Why do I say so? A person, like, let me say, a nobody, I, call, I managed to garner some votes. And I've met people, so, you know, I've met people who were, who were complimenting me. Starting from zero, starting from nowhere, just getting into politics, like we registered maybe in like March and in uh, July we are having elections. And I got 0.04%, at least there's a 0.04%, it means something, that's the beginning. To, 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 to achieve, to be successful, success in, is in taking the first step. So this was the first step. So I'm saying I am the winner. I won. To me, I won. I didn't, I didn't lose. I won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what is me. And even when we come to the next election, I will win differently now. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, July, I am going to refer to one of your posts. You mentioned Chinoramba uh, Chitaura, Yova Chiti Chinowukura, Asi Imbwa. Uh, kukura, kona muvengi. 38 years, no progress to the nation. Yo wachi, wachikura matumbu, nesi ya reva na vavu. <laughs> right now we are in 2021, and 41 years of independence. What does this mean to you? Do you still have the same um, stance like you had in 2018? Yeah, you can say that. I still have the same stance, uh, and we must not stop talking. We must not stop backing because the enemy is still there. But it depends with the kind of enemy that you look at. When you look at David or the sense of David, mm -hmm. we see the David in the Bible, the David who, who conquered, who managed to kill uh, Goliath. You see? So to me, we still have the Goliath that boasts themselves. When you say Goliath, who are you referring to? I know the first uh, thought that comes to one to a person when you mean Goliath in politics, you would think of maybe the ZANU-PF or the current government. But that one is a little Goliath. The bigger Goliath in, is in the people. The fear to do the right thing. The fear to speak positively. The fear to take um, up challenges, especially women. We need women who are courage, courageous, who may, women who, who, who are there to challenge the men. Because if we look at our culture, say Mushamukads, if, even if we look at the Bible, we are not of a lesser, human but we are actually equal other otherwise i may say we are the we are there to take our nation forward for god has in with adam so it it needed a woman for somebody to be there for procreation to be there so about not All of them who do not realize that what they are doing is wrong. Because when someone engages in corruption, be it a government, a, a political leader, be it someone who is in the government, be it someone who is in the civil society, the moment you are eating at the expense of the suffering of the people of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, both are the people of Anukura. <laughs> All right. And also, part of your post said that this could another GNU. True good new government, new players who do not compromise our development for a few green papers, which only benefit the elite. Right now, you're part of the Poland. 
Do you see Pollard uh, being different from the GNU? Do you see uh, Pollard being the answer um, that is different from what you wanted, a new government? Pollard is not a new government, but it's there to bring change. It's there to, to, to bring, uh, to address the issues that are bedeviling our nation. So, when I look at Pollard, I see it as a unique institution and as an opportunity for those invited and other players to complement what the government is doing and to, um, and to contribute towards transformation of our nation. So we are, it's not a GNU and we are not going to be in a GNU government, but we are there to transform our nation. We are there to address the issues that are, um, are challenging our nation. So Pollard is a positive uh, platform where we are saying even those who were invited and denied the invitation should come and uh, put their contribution and we work collectively. All those who have got the progressive mind was Pollard is an institution of people or, or political parties who have a progressive initiative for our nation. So it's a positive thing that we have Pollard. Mm -hmm. And how do you see um, you as a party, David, and you as a woman in Pollard? What role are you playing in uh, maybe in women empowerment, also encouraging other women to be part of politics? Okay, on that one. As David, we have got programs lined up uh, for the people of Zimbabwe, not just our members, because we are a political party, not of only our members, but of the people of Zimbabwe, those who want progress. We've got projects that are lined up for people to take up so that um, we won't find, uh, we won't find like Vanuati Chairman and Zara and Shiji. At times, me personally, I feel giving a person food or donating something to eat, we are actually doing the wrong thing. Yet, we also have to donate and give. What I, I want most is like, in Shona they say, <coughs> instead of giving a person who have a how do we do the fishing? So by initiating this project, because if you give a person nasi mangwana ka akajika mangwana ka nasi na they will come back to you. That's when you end up seeing vanu wachi manipulate kwa vanu wachi shandis kwa. Because you, the person who gives you food will become your master. So if he says you go and beat up people, you just go because you want something to eat in return. Mm -hmm. So if we give people, if we teach people to be dependent on themselves, if we teach people uh, to use their potential and their mental capacity to bring uh, like a meal on their table, to bring like, um, to create like opportunities for employment. That's, that is the, the, the best thing we can do. Because the uh, went abroad to But that education in and We are waiting. 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 We are We are We are We We but it took me rather to buy us to exploit our resources. Mm -hmm. We need to exploit our own resources. In Indica and Tanakanita, a farm, do not find a government employees very permanent, very a farm. They can enter a mine to find a government employees very permanent on that mine. And that mine, I see you can go to no extractor, but it should bring those minerals to a finished product. We look. Uh, 
at home grown solutions. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that uh, as a party, you have programs that are lined up. What are some of the programs that you can share with our viewers and other women who are listening to you as a, as a female president who contested in 2018 and definitely was going to contest in 2013, uh, 2023? What do you promise them? What are the programs lined up? Okay, the programs that we have, we first talk of my projects, then we've got my learning pro programs. Because for one to engage in certain programs and projects, they need to be knowledgeable. How do they do things? Uh, how, like when we talk of a project, money finance, I say, how do Maritza Chobano the Chengeta say how to manage their finances? We start from the learning, pro at the moment we are at the learning program stage where we invite women, they come, we teach them projects, we teach them how to, find, to manage their finances, we teach them how to maybe start a project without even capital. There are projects like I want I'm not going to start without capital. Yes, they look at if they are silly projects to some, but I've seen uh, many lives being changed starting from the projects, a past passive up. Mm -hmm. And um, also, just looking at politics generally, how do you see the participation of women? And what would you say to other women who also want to get into politics? What word would you give them? Participation of women is not so pleasing. You see, women are still afraid. There are a lot of challenges they face. They are afraid of, of challenges. They are afraid of their male counterparts. They are afraid of their male counterparts even in the parties they, they join. There's a lot of abuse of women. Um, now, those neta kutiwa kazi vasengeva riva shoma into into in politics. Mm -hmm. And in your party, how many are you? How many, in terms of your membership, how many are you? I can not say a number specifically, but we have got members in all provinces of of Zimbabwe, and in our leadership position, we we encourage, we put an effort to have a a large number of women because we want to take women up front before men men takavapamukana kudara takavapamukana for the past 40 or so years takavapamukana and we can do it as women if I, I can give an example like um maybe a traditional example she's a woman of influence right now park is quite that uh the statue that you know, the statue that is being talked about, that is one to be mm -hmm. It is because they recognize that woman as a woman of influence. I got out the a liberation struggle. It needed a woman. She's the woman we initiated. So as women, we need to, we want, to, we should initiate things that brings change to our nation. We need to initiate uh, a lot of things that um, transform our nation. It is the mother who teaches a child to say, Baba, am I? It is the mother who teaches a child even, all right, at the port, you know. For a person, for a man to be said, ah, he's a, he's a man, he's grown, he's now well up. It took a woman. So if we look at women and empower them and we encourage them to into leadership position, on how to do it. If I give an example, uh, I've got my, all right, let me say my mother. But instead of you see, but then she couldn't. She was not allowed to do anything or to go anywhere until at a later stage. But to chamber, but to only one of her because of I think I'm not a health worker, and she's not a health worker. But she learned to do like I want. So I look at her. Could my mother go over there? Can we have a chance? Because of my workshops, right now maybe she could have a position in Pamsoro in the health sector. My mother builds. 
vano vaka uh, vaki ro danga re uka vaki ro toilets ne mun vaka vaka ifi ma toilets e vama schools isi right now maybe she was going to be maybe town planner in any other position in pump soro isi tika tasa the profession ya katro na na sekuru anjadi zavo maybe she was she was going to be a senior position uh, in the a police force or a government a defense forces or whatever but I've now can one I'm can go because I can see when I'm scanner so this is a challenge when I was scanner I was what was not bad so I don't want to work at a river she change it over and you could be given about a baba we know it's no big given a baba getting into like I am here doesn't mean you could see and she had my my shows and we come and to speak on the topic or certain to speak on the top of the bomb and to Kanzi tukenda kumunda, onoto inda kumunda, onoto mbata badza, onoto for sure on iti dika uga zila mungu wa mambela, onoto to zila shu sese kurima. Because I was trained to do that. And I saw my mother doing it, and I can do it. But as if I'm not going to stop, I'm going to take a kupinta in the leadership position, in politics, even in the social sector, even in kubasa. But I'm a managing director, as I am a managing director of the security company. As in the so I'm a person and I know my challenges, and I encourage all women to have my challenges. Let's not look down upon ourselves. We are a, 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 a wonderfully made and fearfully made. We are a unique species of human creation as women. So that is what I can say on on on. Okay, mm -hmm. and do you think that women uh, support each other enough? There are narratives of uh, people saying that women pull each other down. Let's take for instance, you, you were a presidential candidate. Do you think that the women around you supported you enough? Looking at Zimbabwe with a 52% of women compared to a 46% of men, how do you see women uh, supporting each other? Uh, we have got a problem, as we've mentioned. Some women, they undervalue other women. When we get in politics, we are said, Tirima Ure, you know, that word, Tirima Ure. But in any, the word of Ure, if a person calls me Ure, I like it because it's, you are a heroine of uncompromised revival of uh, economy. That's the word Ure, uncompromised uh, heroines of uncompromised revival of economy. So if you call me a hood, I'll say yes. You know, I'll say yes. Because and sweet as you should compromise, should uncompromise. Do you think that you should straight? Do you think that you should I'm right on the track, on the right track, and I'm going to do my things positively without looking right or left, but looking straight focus on my goals mm -hmm. and as as we close what word would you give to other women who also want to get into politics and um what way would you give them to us uh listeners who are listening to you right now um to women out there uh, so there's nothing wrong in being a, a a member of a political party not just a member to be a leader in the political field. Actually, I encourage more women to be in politics and I encourage more women to support women than men. Than men. We have given enough support to men. We would go up front and do the singing and exalting men. It's time for us to be exalted. So we need to get up, smell the coffee, and be on the right track and start doing things that will transform our nation. The nation out there is waiting for us. If we don't act, people will die. Look at Esther. Esther in the Bible. She saved her people. She stood up for her people. And the king, right? But she gathered courage and stood before the king until the enemy of their uh, people was taken away. So we need to send as women, get out of the blankets, get out of that comfort zone which is in Chengit, and start chengetering you, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and start chengetering you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That's what I can say to women. There's nothing wrong in getting into politics. Actually, it is a positive thing that women get into politics so that we help in transforming our nation. We be on the forefront of transforming our nation because the nation needs us. Mm. Whenever a baby is sick, it needs a woman to carry the baby. It needs a woman, even from long ago, they would chew those African herbs and spit in the mouth of a baby who is not feeding. They could even um, put that porridge in their mouth and swallow to save the people. That the situation that we have in Zimbabwe, it needs women who have got that heart of a mother to save our nation, to save our baby, to save our beloved mother Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe just to address your younger self, I'd like you to address maybe that young 15-year-old uh, Melba. What would you tell yourself um, prior to where you are today? <sighs> Firstly, I would thank you. I'll say thank you, Melba. You made li me live long up to this age, gathered your courage to stand up against men. You went against all odds, even from the beginning. There were issues that we, that, that Melba could face and the other Melbas out there, out there, like if we say, we look at this young people in Epworth, if you have, if you have had the nine year olds doing prostitution, it's, 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 hard. it's, it's, it's so painful, it's so painful. We need to move from that. We need to work on changing uh, the mindset of our young girls. Maybe the parents, maybe at the leadership. That's why we need ma many women in leadership positions so that when policies are made, they will protect our girls. Mm -hmm. So I think that 15-year-old, maybe from that day-year-old Melba, up to the time I went into politics, because I'm not going to leave politics. Whatever comes, I remember someone like my husband, you know, politics, you're going to be killed. And I am already signed my death certificate, my dear. Don't worry. If I die, I die. But I'm dying for the people of Zimbabwe. I'm dying for a woman like me, who I also want to be recognized. I'm dying for that woman like me, who I don't want to keep being abused there with you, the husband. But I mean, to be abused by you, the husband, to be abused by the other politician, by, to be abused by that um, managing director or CIO or that I don't know who wants when she goes to look for a job. We are not objects of less value. We are very, as I've said, we are a very unique and important species of human creation because we have got focus. If women put their minds onto things, things will work. It will really work. Never be lied that it won't work. It will work. It will really work. Mm -hmm. It only needs us women to support each other. When you see something not adding up, give her advice. She's a fellow woman. And and one, Mumanto, who was in honor of Iwaka, but one or one Kazum was also Wakus was no ping, but this was at ping. So whenever I see the passy, ah, she's lacking this at a half and no tauri qua. Say, ah, the passy, do something. I remember this, this lady on Facebook page when I posted my first picture, said, start by uh, putting a proper campaign picture. She said it in that way. But it made me realize, oh, when you are contesting, you need a proper campaign picture. So where do I get it? I went to Whipsu, they gave me lectures, then I started looking for someone to take my campaign photo, the one like those you saw on the ballot paper and the other was that I used. Mm -hmm. She gave me, it was that like Arugushora, but to me, I took it as an advice. So Arugushora, Took that, that take that as an advice. When you're talking about how can I better it, it should be something positive. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll give you an opportunity to address to um, Zimbabweans who are listening to you right now is the president of David. Um, I'll say success begins from the first step 
into the right direction. Don't ever doubt yourself. Believe in yourself. Don't actually listen to negatives and pick something positive that will better you. That's what will make the, our nation uh, be prosperous. Be united, work collectively together for a good cause. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, this time we want your support as women. Support as women, not just me. There are other women there. If I if I see the Madam Mariacha uh, having a challenge, I should be there to support her, not be, not because she, because she's in opposition. No, we need to move from the politics of individuals, but into politics of issues where we support each other and work towards transformation, transform transforming our nation into a better state. Zimbabwe being on the, la the last name on the list of countries doesn't mean Zimbabwe is the list, but Zimbabwe is a city on the hill. It is light above all nations. Don't worry about all these negatives that are being said. The best transformation starts from these challenges that we are having. Because kind of personal challenges, we cannot think of getting something better. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you so much, our President Amil Batsapazi, for joining us on this episode of The Shift as she was sharing her journey, sharing some of the challenges and sharing about how women need to join hands and Zimbabweans as a whole to join hands together and achieve our goal. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, President Amil Batsapazi, and thank you so much for tuning in on this episode of The Shift. And thank you. Don't forget to like and share this, this program if you have questions for uh, President Mio Badzapasa, please uh, just comment on the comment section. My name is Rimbo Nikadzino, and it's a good afternoon.